Okay guys, welcome back to another segment of Tip Time where we take a deep dive into your questions. Today, I wanted to cover through some really common problems I see with the pop-up and takeoff for beginner to intermediate surfers. Quite often I see the same things showing up again and again. I think the positive thing here is that I know the same problems will probably be applying to some extent in your surfing if you are having a problem with the takeoff. And so hopefully the information in this video can be really good to help you troubleshoot your own surfing. I'm going to outline the common problems that I usually see and then we'll go through a really good example of the perfect takeoff for a beginner to intermediate surfer, exactly what that involves. And then in the end, I'll make sure that I, I guess, align all of these key points we go through for that perfect takeoff with the common problems so that if you are thinking that there's bits and pieces from here or there that aren't quite uh, integrated into your takeoff right now and it's giving you a bit of trouble, then you can troubleshoot that for yourself and try these things for your own surfing. If you have any questions at the end of the edit, please leave them in the comments below. And if you enjoy the edit and the videos and you want to support, uh, please consider subscribing. But let's get into it now. So, with the beginner takeoff, I often find that the problems kind of fall into two categories. We can either be too far forwards or backwards with respect to our body weight over one rail or another. So, too far forwards would be the weight being too far over the toe side rail, and too far backwards would be over the heel side rail. Now, of course, with any of this, we know that the board's gonna tilt too far to either side if this is the case, and so we really need to make sure that we know and understand how to center ourselves properly. The other reason we can be too far backwards or forwards is with respect to our position on the board um, and where our weight is going, where our momentum is going to either drive us down the face of the wave and continue the wave or pull us back. And this will be how far we're jumping through on the board or how far on the tail we're landing. For the beginner pop-up, there is a correct place to be, so we'll jump through that to make sure that you you're in the right spot for your takeoffs. Um, and then we can also speak a little bit about the progressions that we might make further down the track as you progress with your takeoffs as well. So just to recap there, we can either be too far over the toe side rail, too far over the heel side rail, we can be too far forwards, which leads us to our nose dives, and we can be too far back, which leads us to not actually catching the wave and falling off the back of the wave from the takeoff, which isn't what we want. So four key things that we need for the perfect pop-up. The first one that I really wanna iterate is the fact that we need a wide stance. Now, far too often, I find, especially with beginner surfers, it's very easy to uh, adopt a bit of a narrow stance because this is how we're used to standing. Um, but especially in the early stages, having a wide stance does so much for our surfing, both with our stability, make sure we're maintaining balance, uh, preventing any wobbles, but really placing our weight into the right part of the board as well, which is what we'll go into as to why this works later down the video. But the first thing you need to know is coming into a wide stance, I like to think of a sumo wrestler. So that's how exaggerated I like to start. We can always go and dial that back, uh, but it's harder to add more. So exaggerate it first, and then we can dial it back if we need to. But to get the feeling of what it's like to have a really wide, stable base, this is gonna be crucial. If you're someone who is falling quite a lot because you're losing balance and the weight's not in the right portion of the board, then adopting this wide stance will be the first key to making sure that you're absolutely as stable as possible and you're absolutely able to make sure that you're uh, keeping the momentum of the wave. For our beginner to intermediate pop-up, it's also extremely important that we pop far enough forwards on the board. This is probably the one that if I was to say would apply to most people, this would be it. And the problem we usually find is if we pop too far onto the tail, especially if we're in white water or a really slow type of wave, which we're more likely to surf as beginning to intermediate surfers, uh, if we're popping up at the tail, which causes drag, and that's our brakes, then we won't have enough momentum to drive forwards. What we should aim for is for that front foot to come right underneath the chest as we're popping through. If that front foot comes underneath the chest and we've got a wide stance, we're gonna be in the perfect, I guess, posture and position to make sure we're driving and we're maintaining a lot of speed and we're maintaining a lot of balance. I like to think probably just a little bit behind the midpoint of the board would be that perfect place to make sure that we're uh, bringing the front foot through to. And that should kind of be around that sternum level or right underneath the chest. I very, very rarely, especially in long borders, see surfers bring their feet too far forwards. 99% of the time, the opposite where they're not far enough forwards. Now, we've got a wide stance and our front foot is pretty far forward. So some of you might be thinking, all right, well, what if I need to moderate weight back onto the tail. How are we gonna stop ourselves from nose diving? The key here is being able to transition weight really nicely from your back foot to your front foot. We've gotta have that good system of being able to filter our weight forwards and being able to filter our weight backwards. Now, 
Nine times out of 10, when we start to do this, we will do this incorrectly because it's hard to know how much weight to moderate and filter onto that back foot. What we do need to try and do though, I would say is start out with a lot because again, this is going to mitigate our risk of nose diving, which is probably our number one concern at that time. But then as we get better and better at this, we need to make sure it might only be that we're putting about 30%, 40% of our weight onto the back foot. That's probably a more realistic distribution of how that weight will look from back to front foot. So where the back foot is taking about 40% of the weight. Again, if we're going 90, 100%, we're just gonna stall way too quickly and it's not gonna work. And especially in those sections that are kind of steep, but kind of not steep, this is definitely gonna bring us unstuck. So really important that we get the feel for that, but we have to absolutely make sure that we're really good at transitioning our weight from our back to our front foot where we stay in a very single planted position. This brings us into a lot of tricky situations, especially when we do start to explore steeper waves as we're stepping through to that uh, intermediate takeoff because we're going really fast downhill and we're staying in the same line and that nose is just gonna unfortunately enter the water. So we've gotta be able to lift or put weight onto that tail and therefore lift the nose. This is a really good segue into a lot of the more advanced takeoffs as well. So it's a great thing to dial in right now and then we can progress through to something like that. Now, this last one might seem fairly obvious, but it is another key attribute that I see missing in a few pop-ups. And that's just simply because there's so much to focus on in the beginning, especially as we're learning to pop up as beginners, learning to take off as beginners. And then as we step through to that intermediate phase, sometimes this isn't corrected beforehand. So we do need to make sure that our feet land right across the stringer. I like to think about a 45 degree angle or a diagonal angle across the stringer, but we've got to make sure our midfoot on the, both the back and the front foot is passing over the stringer. What we often see is a lot of things that bring us unstuck if we're not right over the stringer, where we'll take longer to stand up. We'll have our bottom or something like that hanging over one side of the rail and our weight's not gonna be in the middle, of course, which is where we need to stay nice and centered, nice and balanced. And so that's how we're gonna lean too far on one side of the rail and come unstuck. Um, and it's also an unsteady position for us to eventually come up nice and tall. So we do need to make sure that our feet land as quickly as possible in the middle of the board from that takeoff. Now, if we can't land the feet in the middle of the board straight away, we need to try and use our hands as a bit of a steadier to make sure we can then quickly adjust our feet into the correct position before we stand tall. I can almost guarantee if you're standing tall with your feet off across either side of the stringer, it's gonna be a really good recipe for losing your balance. But that being said, you're gonna give yourself even more steadiness and stability if you can keep the feet nice and wide. So even if you do land a little bit in the incorrect position with respect to feet over the stringer, if you've got a wide stance, it's gonna give you a bit more safety room to allow yourself more time to make these corrections as well. But really important to make sure that feet land right across the stringer. So check that out for your own surfing as well. I hope that was helpful guys. If you do have any questions about any of that, please let me know in the comments below or type me an email, shoot me a message on Instagram in any other way. Um, and I'd be happy to get back to you guys. If you have any other questions for tip time that you'd like me to go through in future segments, um, please leave those in the comments below as well. Um, other than that, we'll catch you on the next one. Hope you guys are getting waves and we'll see you soon.